This is a chapter from Overshare, the Lynx.net story. Find the rest at overshare.lynx.net. When I was in high school, I saw a new magazine advertised on the side of a bus. It was called Wired, and it was the first time I'd seen a technology publication with a human face on the cover. My freshman year in college, I called Wired magazine four times, begging for an internship. I finally reached this editor, Julie Chiron. She took a look at my website and offered me a chance to join the online division of Wired magazine as they prepared to launch Hotwired.com, a new kind of publication for the web. I moved to San Francisco that summer and crashed with the publisher of Hotwire, Jonathan Stoyer. Stoyer lived in the Cyberganic Community House, a bunch of 20-somethings high on the internet crammed into a psychedelic decorated San Francisco Mission District flat with ethernet to their bedrooms, hosting raves with internet terminals at them. Under their guidance, I went looking for a new address for my personal website. Justin.com was taken, Justin.org was available, but I wanted to get a domain that was more about the web. So, I registered links.net, plus an even shorter domain, bud.com. When he's not working as a reporter for Hot Wired, 19-year-old Justin Hall spends his time putting out Justin's links from the underground. While I was working there, my website often got more traffic than Wired's, mostly because of my sex links. One day in the office, a brightly attired, enthusiastic guy with a hat and a mustache came wandering through the desk. It was Howard Rheingold. He'd just published a book about virtual communities and now he was our executive editor. We sparked up a friendship there and for 20 years Howard has been a friend, mentor, and father figure to me. Howard and I shared an open access technology philosophy. We believed that it was a good thing for people to connect with each other, that it was better for people to participate in the creation of culture actively. We saw Hotwired as a chance to put the audience on stage and let the web perform for itself. But the publisher of Wired magazine had a different vision. A lanky, long-haired, long-legged libertarian named Louis Rossetto he would stride into the office and pound out extremely vigorous emails explaining that Hotwired was to be a statement of the Wired brand. Amateur hour on the web is over, he declared. So, in October 1994, Hotwired launched. The front page was loaded with graphics that never changed and slowed down the average computer. Today, few people remember Hotwired as much more than a pioneer of the banner ad. In the years following Hotwired's launch, the sites that would truly transform the way that we communicate were all about letting the audience perform for itself. Meanwhile, all my publishing and ranting online got me invited to prognosticate about the future of publishing at the Rand Corporation to an audience filled with admirals and executives. I am a living example of personal publishing empowerment. As I sat down to frame this talk, I realized I have a pretty bleak message for large-scale publishers. Mass media requires passivity while the net resoundingly rejects it. Being in San Francisco for the digital revolution was intoxicating. But I think I wanted to be a more well-rounded human being. So, with some encouragement from Howard, I returned to college after taking just one semester off to work for Wired. The web was growing fast now, and I couldn't really keep up with the new links. So, I got help building a system to make my website interactive. Now my readers could submit links for each other. By January 1995, I had 27,000 daily readers and link traders visiting links.net. That spring, I got several upset emails from the Indiana University student government 
Someone had posted their web address on my sex links page, mislabeling the Indiana University student government homepage as a wild <laughs> hot <laughs> sex site. And their servers were crashing from all the traffic. I just wanted to help promote curiosity and exploration of the range of things happening on the web. I didn't want to hold up a megaphone for assholes. So rather than spend my time policing dirty links, I took down my interactive sex section and quickly lost about 20,000 daily readers. I decided to focus on sharing stories from my life instead. That year I was arrested and I caught a sexually transmitted disease. Plus, I got in a physical altercation with author Kurt Vonnegut. <laughs> Treat yourself to more of Overshare, the Links.net story. You can find too much information at overshare.links.net.